Azizi Kado is one Nigerian that has broken the mold in the world of fashion. It's the state the obvious. When in the year 2000, she launched her famous level, she drew the world's attention to the unique and relatively unknown African fabrics. Today, there is a tremendous patronage of African fabrics across the globe. Just one year into the fashion scene, Zizikado was already launching out to South Africa with her sides targeted towards Europe. Zizikado's preeminent stature in the fashion industry has not gone unnoticed as this creative icon has been recognized worldwide with so many individual and industry awards. The United Nations Peace Ambassador has stamped a well-deserved authority on the fashion world. Please join us in welcoming to the 15 Minute Studio a creative fashion icon, a revolutionaire, and an award winning designer, Zizi Kado. You know, when you have uh, the male uh, oh traditional God. title holders, you yes. call them chief. If it's a woman, what do I call it? It's the same chief. Okay, chief. Is that, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's chief, I think. All right. <laughs> You're welcome to Thank 15 you. Minutes to you. Now, let me hear it right hard. In 2000, you got paid by Halliburton, and I know that's about um, 155,000. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I, I am so blown away. I am so blown away. I, I'd forgotten that about that. That was yeah. a master seat for you. Talk yes, to us about it. Yes, um, I think that was my starting, that was um, my Zizikado moment. Yes. That money, mm -hmm. because that was what I started with. And with that money, I got a place and I started. Even though it wasn't enough for me to get a proper size um, shop where I could um, have all the machineries and everything I wanted inside. But it was enough to have just the shop itself. And um, we had like a makeshift um, thing out at the back of the shop, like a, a tapoline that we had to project outside. And... Um, a table where we have the machine and after in the evenings where we're closing we just fold up the machine and put it under the table and it was so cool you know I, I when I think about it now and you know when it's raining you have to come inside the shop and wait for the rain to stop before you go back out and start again but hey thank God today we you know occupy a whole duplex and um, the story is different the story is different oh, beyond <laughs> that, what are the challenges you face you know you know climbing the ladder you you, you came out really strong but uh, small really but your name Zizikado is well acclaimed nationally and locally but there are things you may have gone through beside the one you just told us um i think my initial um um i would say um obstacle was uh, that initial acceptance people accepting the fact that ankara is just as good as any other fabric um it was taking a whole lot of talking to get people to even accept it to accept the fact that you could do a whole lot with it you could um turn it into an evening outfit you can anything you want you can it can be cup it can be whatever you want it to be and um i, I said that i said then it was something that was only relegated to you know the market women and all that so for them to understand that you, you get different grades a lot of people then used to think oh it's not the quality is not good because you wash and it fades and everything but then you tell them you know there's quality there's quantity you have to go for quality so educating people on how to take care of the fabrics and all that and um, followed by that, you get, of course, the usual infrastructure. There's no lie, there's no good staffing and all that. And, um, but now, I think I've been able to, you know, hug the whole experience, hug the whole obstacles, and turn it into a learning process. And there's, I really have nothing to complain about right now. <laughs> and by the way, your Ankara, the one you have, is looking very lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Know, you. Um, mm -hmm. 55 years is such a long time, but it, it can is. also be very small if, you, if it's not well managed. Exactly. And uh, I'd like to know, for Nigeria and Nigerian in fashion industry, uh, how has it been this past 55 years? I think the Nigerian industry has come so far. It's, um, it's made its mark. It's, if you look at it globally, we've kind of like been able to impact on the world in the way that um, um, we've projected our ourselves, our designs, um, our fabric. Um, <clears throat> two, three years ago, we were able to influence um, um, some big names in the Western world who had prints as well. 
um, there was a time also when Stephanie called uh, her label was lamb had um, shoes made in Ankara and so many other different uh, designers as well abroad who had all those inspirations taken from Africa and um, uh, there was um, at one time when we did, um, I was asked by the British Council to represent Nigeria on the UK Africa Forum. It was held in UK and and report back. And I found out that um, Nigeria has greatly influenced the African world, greatly influenced so many other countries, especially in all arts form. I'm not talking just fashion now, I'm talking not, um, theme, theater, art, um, visual arts and so many other um, art forms. We've so greatly influenced people in the way they, they think, in the way they, they, you know, they, they portray themselves as Africans. Africa is now a place to be looked into. The fashion industry everywhere else, it's um, a billion dollar business. And Nigeria, at this point now, I think we've been able to create a wealth capacity of some sort. To the, um, and um, of course, there's so many dynamics involved in fashion. It's just not the um, fashion itself. You have the stylists, you have the makeup artists, you have the creative directors, you have the graph, uh, graphers, you have so many aspects of it that complete it. And all those things creates. It is job capa um, wealth cre um, creation of some sort. And um, at the point that we are now, we have... Um, um, a whole lot of individuals, a whole lot of talent, a whole lot of young people who are displaying things that are un, you know, unimaginable. You, you see some photographs that are taken, some photo shoots, you wonder is this done in Nigeria. People are now beginning to you know, explore and ex enhance and explode. You know? they're, they're, they're tapping into everything that they have and they're bringing it out there. And we've made such a big mark that I believe the best is yet to come. Definitely. You know, <laughs> I, I just want to keep quiet and let you just go on and on and on. <laughs> and I want to ask you, Flaubert, are you listening to that? <laughs> I'm really proud to be Nigerian. Thank you. Really, really proud. Really. Now, uh, we've done uniquely well and mm. we are well acc acclaimed, you know, internationally. Uh, talking about the Nigerian fabric, Nigerian designers, mm. Nigerian African designers. What is it that makes us so special, so, so, so unique? It is, I, I would say, it is that fact that um, we're using a fabric that is indigenous to us. It is, it is for us. And for me, Zizikado, the label, when it started, was all out for that. That was my dream, having to create an identity that would say this is who we are as Nigerians. And I felt that we, the only way we could do that is by using what we have, which is the Ankara, the Akwete, the Kente, uh, no, the, not the Kente, the Ashoke. Um, we have a lot of um, the tie and dye and stuff like that. And so we're, we've be, been able to harness all this and use them for um, contemporary designs. It's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you know, a lot of times I watch the, the, the runway, the styles, the designs. I quite admire them, but I keep wondering, are these ready to wear? <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, uh, no, no, um, fashion um, is another art form, I say to people. Fashion... Okay. Um, I try so much to, to, to let people know that if they just take out time to not be serious about it, you know, not view it seriously and say, okay, this is not swearable. See it as art form. Some pieces are art pieces and really not supposed to be one. It's just to, um, like a painter, you have a canvas, you just, you know, you pour out whatever, your interpretation, your, your, your dreams, your everything onto that canvas. And uh, it is for you, the viewer of that painting, to make out what, you know, that painting tells you. It could, uh, 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 um, an artist could paint a tomato, and for somebody else, that tomato stands for something else. You're seeing it as something different. Same thing as um, fashion. Fashion is, is, for me, architectural. Fashion is um, eclectic. Fashion is... Um, mechanical fashion is technology because it has so many components of it that when you put it together it means so many different things so not everything that is on the runway that it's necessarily wearable it is just the designer saying this is what i have this is my interpretation of this this is what i want to a story i want to tell with this line with this collection 
Okay, so when I want it for myself, you can reconstruct it for me. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. I have pieces, you know, even that. So, you know, some people come in like, I want it, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't have it. You can't have it like that. I insist, you know. You have to be able to educate people to tell them what is what, what to go, you know, for their body size, their, um, their silhouette, their everything, their, their personality. You have to be able to take that all into life. account. Definitely. Yeah. Now, are uh, you talking about you insisting? As an African designer and of repute too, do you also insist on um, slim, if not? Um, no, 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 no. Okay. I don't. I don't. I don't. Um, I, I, I've never been into that. I don't buy slim models. Um, because one, it's not healthy, and two, you're giving out false impressions, and um, three, you're giving out, um, you're making um, the young ones see life differently, see life negatively. You're not supposed to be skinny to look beautiful. Uh, there's something beautiful, beautiful about every woman. There's some people that if they look skinny, they're not fine at all. You know, but, and, uh, but I think dresses stand out nicer on a fuller woman. You know, you have the curves, yeah. and we're Africans. We need to show the curves. And I think a woman's sensuality is all in the silhouette. There has to be something for you to, you know, to show that you're a woman. And um, no, I've never been game. I've never had my models anything. I think that the, the, the least model I've had to use on my runway is a size 10. Oh. That's cool to know. It's a size so 10. I always insist on that. <laughs> Even <laughs> my shows are broad. I always insist. I think I'm the, I'm not, the, the, there's this show we do in um, New York, the Couture Fashion Week. And once there's a car, goes, ah, okay, save all the size 12 and 44, <laughs> you know? <laughs> because I insist on that. They, they have to look healthy. Yeah, definitely. Now, um, I, I'd like to know, I, I want to take off the scissors and the tape of you and find out who is Zizekado. Um, Zizekado. If I, I tell you, I'm yet to find out myself. You know? Oh, that's not <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Zizekado okay. is, um, is a fun-loving person. Mm -hmm. Is um, um, phew, What is it about me now? Uh, one thing about me that people don't know is I'm actually a very shy person. Oh, you have a way of showing it. <laughs> I'm a very shy person. Um, I'm a very I'm spiritual. Um, 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 what you see was, is what you get. I I, I don't. Um, I'm not bipolar. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I'm hardworking. I love to work. I love my job. I love my job. Um, I used to be able to say I love to party, but um, you know we're getting old. <laughs> I'll still find the time somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Sometime. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I like your idea of old age. <laughs> if this is it. <laughs> right now, I, when you're not working, really, mm. you just told us you like to party. So, what other things do you do for relaxation? Um, I cook. I love cooking. Oh, man. What, what are you cooking today? Um, when I go, get home, I think, um, I think I'm going to make um, what's been playing on my head is okra soup, pepper soup style. No kidding. You see, we're, 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 we're the same thing. <laughs> we're pair. I like eating. You like cooking. Uh, so oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love to eat as well, but I don't know where it goes, you know. I really don't know where it goes. I love cooking. I, if I find it therapeutic, you know. Mm. Sometimes when I'm really stressed off, I just go into the kitchen. And I always make sure I have um, ingredients at home. So... And because I always get visitors, so I'm always cooking. I uh, just go into the All right. thing, 11 o'clock uh, in the night, and just cooking right. up something. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Thank we will you. definitely be your guest one day and get to eat that okra. So maybe today. On that lovely note, I say thank you for coming. <laughs> and thank we're you. moving back to our main studio. Suleiman and Ruth, don't worry, I'll carry you when I'm going. <laughs>